Hello, Internet! My name is Catherine Barsonistas, and you are watching The Gluttonous Geek Presents Munchies and Minis, my weekly cooking show where I make recipes inspired by very various tabletop role-playing games, such as, well, Dungeons & Dragons, Shadowrun, and uh, the subject of today's recipe, Pathfinder. Though, uh, Pathfinder, those who've actually not played it before, if you're uh, aware of Dungeons & Dragons, well, the people who created Pathfinder used to work for... Uh, Dungeons and Dragons. In fact, they were the ones who kind of made a system very similar to D&D 3.5 and created their whole own campaign world around it, the world of Galarian. Um, we are actually going to be making a recipe from the computer game, the Pathfinder Kingmaker, uh, based off of the same world and uh, I really do recommend this game because for those who are fans of uh, games like Baldur's Gate and um, any kind of top-down uh, top role-playing game, uh, have basically the same kind of gameplay with a little bit of kingdom management too thrown in, so that's actually kind of cool. Um, today's recipe, uh, like I said, you do have various edibles. It's not like, well, not like edibles, edibles, but consumables in the game, and because you have to camp every eh, couple of hours or so, maybe 12 hours, or at least once 24 hours, otherwise your party gets kind of stingy, uh, gets kind of cranky and all that, uh, and usually it adds various status buffs if you cook a particular recipe other than just, well, a hearty meal. Uh, today's recipe, First World Mince Pie, is one of those recipes, which you can make with, well, nuts, chocolate, flour, and a, well, a what they call first world fruit in their icon looks very much like a dragon fruit which i would say uh first world fruit i wasn't trying to make a con uh, kind of crack at the whole concept of you know the first world and being able to find stuff in like like this in kind of first world countries but i will say it kind of feels a little bit like that uh today when i was at kroger and the only dragon fruit which they were charging about six dollar a piece weren't exactly the freshest in the world. In fact, I'm kind of annoyed that they were selling them, but they're fresh enough for tonight's recipe. Um, once again, uh, the sorry, I have to kind of backtrack a little bit. So the first world within the Pathfinder universe is actually a kind of an alternate real, like an alternate dimension. It was first created before the world, like before well, the material world was created as kind of the gods' drawing board, where they could just create willy-nilly whatever the heck they felt like in this particular pocket of, well, I don't know if you would call it reality, but, you know, all the monsters and everything, giant monsters, owl bears, all of that, originally from the first world. The Fae, first world. So we're kind of going for sort of an otherworldly flavor of kind of what, what would a fruit from the god's drawing board taste like. Something we don't really have, but from there. So uh, I'm gonna be combining a couple of ingredients for this concept. Uh, first, like I said, uh, the ingredients listed did say nuts. Uh, the nut image on um, Pathfinder Kingmaker looks very much like a hazelnut. Hazelnuts, I love hazelnuts. However, they're not always that easy to, easy to find in grocery stores. So it, we will instead be using some chocolate hazelnut spread, i.e., um, well, if you're going to go for name brand Nutella, though I got off brand, which was about half price. I mean, just because this recipe is from the first world doesn't mean we have to cook like we're in the first world. And uh, we're going to be also putting walnuts in there. What we're kind of doing is sort of a different take on a pecan mini pie, except, you know, without pecans. Um, then we are going to be mixing with that chocolate. We're going to be adding some brown sugar and cinnamon and as well as some chopped fresh peppermint because I figured a little cooling note could be nice and herbs, just various different herbs are available within the Pathfinder Kingmaker game. Um, and to top that off, we're going to be, uh, after baking all that, we're going to be topping off some dragon fruit and making a glaze with strawberry jam to kind of give it a little bit of a different otherworldly flavor. So you kind of get the whole dragon fruit, i.e. very similar to kiwi, uh, mixed with strawberry to kind of help offset that tartness and go really well with the chocolate and hazelnut. 
Uh, well, I have kind of rambled on a little too much, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, like with any pie, you want to start out with a flaky pie crust. I did not want to do a standard store-bought pie crust for this, because why? I mean, you could, but why? I hate making pie crust, so I figured out a way to make it a lot easier, as well as a lot less frustrating. Uh, they will involve the use of a freezer and a food processor. So what you're going to want to do is have about a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. And you notice how I'm putting it in a Ziploc bag. This is where we're going to get to the whole freezer part. We are going to be freezing the components for our crust. Um, granted, we're going to have a little bit of kitchen magic. I made pre-made a mix before the hand, but since you want to see you know, how this whole thing is done, we're going to do that. Um, cup and a half of all-purpose flour. Next up, you are going to need either shortening or bacon fat. I have shortening because I ran out of bacon fat making the first batch of this. You're going to want about five tablespoons of that shortening. Or in this particular case, since we're wanting to have it in smaller pieces, we're going to want about, once I find my darn teaspoon, measuring spoon, where'd it go? Teaspoon, teaspoon, holy, holy teaspoon. Aha! Here we are. So here's the general conversion from tablespoon to teaspoon. It is about three teaspoons per tablespoon. We're going to need about five tablespoons of shortening. So therefore, 15 teaspoons. So we're just going to hit that, add a spoon to scrape that up. Let me just switch to our prep cam so you can see what the heck I'm doing here. Get a little spoon. So. I'm just going to basically do three rounds of five so I can actually keep count. So, one, two, three, Four and five. Okay. All right. And now I'm just gonna kind of shake that to coat with some flour. Once again, second time round, same count. One, two, three, four, and Five, that is two out of three. Let's again close, give it a shake, it's a coat. And you notice how I kind of turn the outside of the bag so it keeps it open, like so. You're welcome. That makes things a little bit easier than trying to hold it open and put stuff in at the same time. There's one. Two. Three. Four. And five. And close that up. Give it a shake. We are done with the shortening. I'll stick that there for now. Now you need about four tablespoons of butter cubed. So about a half stick of a stand, uh, standard stick of butter, which I've already got ready to go. 
So I'm just gonna take a chef's knife and cut that up. So. Just one. Just make it easier for myself. It's all going in the same spot. So, yeah. And I'm gonna try to try to cut it into about half half inch cubes. So as you can see, I just got some planks there. Just so gonna cut into matchsticks. And then cubes, which I'm just gonna toss right into the flour mix. Like so. So the reason why I usually hate making pie crust is one, um, pie crust usually, especially a flaky pie crust, requires that you work with cold ingredients. You want your butter as cold as possible. Hey Strike, can you get rid of that uh, spammer for me please? Um, everyone's here, say hello to Strike, because Strike is awesome. He is my game DM, as well as an 8-month subscriber and an excellent mod. We should all be so lucky to have a friend who is as excellent as Strike. But as I was saying, usually you want your butter, and shorten whatever, to be as cold as possible. I have warm hands. And two, well, that was two, three, I live in Georgia. And it is May as of this Saturday, so we're already having about 80 degree weather. Yay! And if I seem a little exasperated tonight is because Monday, which I'm so happy, <laughs> was my two week mark past my second shot for the COVID vaccine. However, that means I'm back in the office. And I'm kind of forgetting, or rather, I kind of forgot what it's like to work 40 hours in a different location than my house, where as opposed to, you know, being in my own house, if there's a slow time, I can do some laundry, can clean the house, I can do some chores, uh, I can get clean the kitchen, you know, before I stream munchies and minis. Yeah, <laughs> it's mm, not like that anymore. Uh, anyway, so we got all of our butter in our bag. So one more ingredient you need to add to the mix before we stick it in the freezer. And that is about a half teaspoon of salt, which I've got right here. So, there we go. Half teaspoon of salt. Close that up. Give that a shake. And I'm just going to stick this in my freezer. Which ideally you would go for at least an hour and a half, two hours. Um, ideally overnight or just whenever you're ready to bake yourself a pie. Uh, I actually recommend this that if you want to have a pie crust ready to go in your food processor without having to do any floury mixes or anything like that. Oh look, it's frozen and ready to go. But I will not make you wait an hour, an hour to have to use this because I in fact made up a mix already right when I got home from work today. So 
I've got uh, bacon fat <laughs> instead of shortening in this, but this is going to be the base of our pie crust. So for that, we are going to need our food processor. So I'm just going to plug that in. And go ahead and pop all of that in to our food processor. The whole thing. There you go. Seal that up. And get my instructions that I wrote yesterday in front of me. So it's all in there. So first you're going to be pulsing it about three times uh, for about three seconds each. So one, two, th wow, it's kind of going all over the place, isn't it? One, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and the seal on this is not the best at the moment. Wow. Things I was not expecting to happen. Basically, you want to pulse it for that much. And next, I need ice water. So I'm going to just get a bowl handful of ice add water to it oh I'm gonna have flower uh, flower flying over the place aren't I Alright, so now I just need to, uh, we're going to pulse that a bit more. Alright, I'm just going to add a tablespoon at a time. have flour going all over the place. One, two, see how that's doing. That could definitely use some more water. Okay, that's looking nice and crumbly flaky and starting to come together but not a giant ball yet which we don't want because then it'll basically get overworked and too tough for me so that's looking pretty good right there if you can see there so to make things a little easier to myself i'm going to go ahead and get another ziploc bag and just transfer this whole thing. Once I get a spoon or something to transfer it with. With I'm just gonna transfer that whole mix into our bag. like so if I can get the blade out of there there we go and we don't need that anymore
All right. Get that spoon out of there. All right. Cool. So now that I've got in my bag, I'm just gonna close that up and kind of push that all together into a ball. Squash it down, and now we have a disc of pie dough. So, now I just need to let that chill in the refrigerator while we make our filling. So, that can go straight into our sink because we don't need it anymore. Next up. We're gonna make that chocolate and nut filling I was talking about. So I'm just gonna grab myself a measuring, sorry, not a measuring bowl, a mixing bowl right here. And there's a little bit of prep I need to do. That prep being written on the thing behind me. So I need to move this back. Alrighty. Derp, derp, derp. So you're going to need about a third of a cup of your chocolate hazelnut spread, i.e. not Nutella. It's, it's the same thing. Well, maybe. I don't know. I don't really honestly have Nutella enough to know the difference between it and the store, and the store brand stuff. But either way, you need about a third of a cup of this. This will act as not only your big sweet part of it, but also since there's palm oil in there, you're kind of also getting your uh, fat portion, which you would normally get with melted butter and a pecan pie. We're not doing that because we already have the fat in there. And my little girl cat just squeaked at me. So once I figure out where the measuring, the third cup measuring cup is, I will go and answer that squeak. Hi, princess. How are you, my baby girl? Hello. You wanna say hi to my followers, sweetie? Yeah? Yeah? Little tiny girl? Baby girl. This is Ginger. She's my little baby princess. And by baby, I mean she's about, oh, almost 22 years old. Isn't that right, sweet girl? Yeah. Mwah. I think the reason why she's lived this long is because she's lost her hearing but certainly not her sense of smell which is why she's in my kitchen trying to trap not uh, trying to trip me isn't that right sweet girl Mwah. yeah this is my baby kitten get you up in the camera so you can see people so that people can see how pretty you are yeah there we go there's the baby girl yeah tiny kitty yeah. Okay, baby girl. Mommy needs to get back to work. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just wash the ginger off my hands so we can get back to food prep. <laughs> what are you sniffing about? There's nothing you can eat today. I'm not giving you chocolate. I mean, I don't know if you'd like dragon fruit, but I don't think I should be giving that to you. It's my squeaker doodle. Okay. Let's see. Right. So. Hazelnut spread. I've got a third of a cup here. Just to make it come out of my uh, measuring cup a little bit easier, I'm just going to be using a bit of cooking spray while keeping an eye on Ginger as she circles back into the kitchen because she assumes that I'm at, I'm here, which means something delicious is gonna follow and then fall off the countertop and she might get something tasty. That will not be happening tonight unless I cave and give her a piece of cheese or ham. None of which are in this recipe. 
However, I am an indulgent mother, and will sometimes give my furry child things that she does not deserve. Alright, so. Chocolate spread. There we go. Third of a cup. To that, I'm going to be adding derp -a -derp -a -derp -a -derp a quarter cup of brown sugar, which admittedly, yes, I should have gotten all my measuring cups out earlier to make this go a little faster. Quarter cup, quarter cup, quarter cup. Brown sugar is a disparu. Um, did it actually make it out here? No, I am running to the pantry. To the pantry, go! I could have sworn that I brought it out. Huh. Okay. Pantry. Brown sugar. Returning from the pantry. Daka 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 da. Oh, you're gonna squeak at me, sweet girl? Sorry, I still don't have anything to give you. Okay. Brown sugar. Alright, measuring cup is right here, and the sugar goes in the bowl. I did a thing! So, right, brown sugar goes over here. Cinnamon! I did mention that uh, I'm, this is my first week back in the office, right? How my brain's kind of gone the way of somewhere that's not usually me. So yes, first week back in the office. I am retired. And unlike most other days, I cannot just then take a nap and then go fire the missiles. So, a derp a der, a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I'm just gonna add that to that. Bam. And then, what else? A tablespoon of fresh chopped peppermint. Or just, you know, mint. However, I've got, uh, I've got both peppermint and spearmint in my garden. They kind of grew back early um, this year. And yeah, uh, they're already overflowing out of the planter pot. And um, to give you an idea, I dried about three bunches a few, uh, about a week or two ago of it. So, and it's already popping right back up. I'm not complaining. Um, because that means once I get into all my witchy herbalism and stuff, I'll, uh, I'll have plenty of mint, whether it goes into teas, oils, or whatever. We'll see. Or if I just kind of end up making my own creme de menthe, or syrups, or bitters with mint. That could be interesting. Alright, so just stripping our leaves here. And then I'll give them a rough chop. You want about a tablespoon? This is probably a little bit more than that, but eh, it'll be fine. So now I just kind of bunch and roll all of that up into a little bundle, which may look a little bit something else that's herbal, but it's not that. I mean, that would be an entirely different recipe, and uh, I would probably get arrested in this state. So, bundle, knife. Chopa chopa chopa, more chopa 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 chopa, a chopa chopa, chopa 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 chopa, and that's roughly about that's roughly about a tablespoon, a little bit, a uh, little bit more than that. It'll be fine. I mean, that's the thing with cooking. I mean. Baking, yes, you do have to be precise with certain things, but usually it involves uh, texture and things such like um, texture, crumb, baking time, all that sort of thing, but it usually just applies to the starch portion of, well, starch and fat portion of your baked good. When it comes to the flavorings, you can usually be a little bit more uh, liberal, unless it's like uh, cocoa powder or something. If you're adding cocoa powder to the dough, you gotta keep in mind it has a certain, um, you can't replace um, a certain amount of flour with the cocoa powder without kind of having to add 
a little bit more flour to kind of make up for it because of the moisture t associated with it. And there's not really all that much starch or really any starch in cocoa powder. So keep that in mind. All right, so I've got all of this together. And oh, right, just because I like things weird and also because it kind of helps enhance your flavors and blend them a little bit better, I'm going to be adding a pinch of kosher salt to the mix. This will also kind of add sort of that salted nut taste. So I'm just going to give that a stir, 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 stir. Yes, that's a technical term. Stir, 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 stir. So there we go. And now I'm going to mix in a half a cup of chopped walnuts or walnut pieces, it's, you get it, it's roughly the same thing. So, that is about a quarter cup. I'll just go ahead and mix that in. And then we need that other quarter cup. All right. Get in there. Okay, yeah, that's about a quarter cup. And there you go. All right. That is our filling. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get my half tablespoon measuring spoon out. For when I need to fill these pies. You're going to be adding about a tablespoon per pie, but that kind of allows me to eyeball it a little bit more, as well as uh, gives me a spoon to scrape out of, which this stuff's sticky. You're going to need that. Alrighty, so get that out of the way, get the cinnamon back in my cupboard, as I narrate my, narrate my way through my whole kitchen. There we go. It's been, it's been a full day at work. Um, it's like, I, I love giving the instructions to someone of, um, can you please, can you get scans of that form that your client took a picture of? And he says, those are scans because he put a phone picture on a page in a Word document, printed it, and then scanned it to a 20 megabyte PDF, and then he emailed it to me. Yeah, you can imagine, it's been that kind of day. I'm just going, how does your brain, I mean, I think he thinks that the only way he can create a PDF is by scanning. When, he doesn't know that he can also print PDF on Word. Like, but even then, it's like, why not just send me the JPEG? Please. Oh, get this. And he printed, he printed it out in black and white. Ooh. Right. So, we have a pie crust to cut and put in things. So I'm just going to need a three inch, I think this is three inches, eh, cookie cutter. I think this is three inches, I think. I think I wish I hope. That looks roughly, yeah, I'm going to have to roll that a little thinner anyway. In the meantime, I'm just going to stick that in there because I don't need it. And... I'm gonna get my pie crust out of the fridge. There we go. So. I'm gonna try a thing. I hope it works. Because I hate rolling things with warm hands. So. I'm going to try to flatten this out, like get this centered as I possibly can in this Ziploc bag. 
That might just have to do with my hands. There we go. Bam. There it is. All right, now I'm going to take my rolling pin. Which, you're in there somewhere. That's... We'll take this rolling pin. Because the big one... Well, I know. The big one has been moved to a different cabinet. Which is right here. Wa bam. Okay. And I'm going to roll this as much as I possibly can, as thin as I can, to take up this whole thing. I basically want enough to fill a make a dozen pies, so basically you'll be needing a 12 cup muffin or cupcake tin. Really the only difference is the, whatever name you refer to it as. So, rolling, rolling, rolling. How are you going to get it out of the bag? I'll show you. Uh, so... That's rolled out, for the most part. So now, I'm just going to take a pair of kitchen scissors and cut that bag open. Isn't that so pretty? Yeah. Kind of sticky, actually. Um, I think I've got a little bit of flour I can pop on that to make it just a little bit less sticky. Okay. Gotta spread that out. All right. So I'm gonna need about 12 circles. Start out with one, two, three, four, five, and six. Just gonna pull those away. over. Flip this over, and over. I'm just going to add a little bit of flour to the top of that to make it a little easier to roll. And I'm going to roll each piece a little bit larger because the holes on our depressions on our cupcake tin are each about three inches wide. I want this to kind of go up the sides a little bit without shrinking down too much. 
And if you try to stretch it, it's going to shrink as it bakes, as opposed to rolling it, which it's less likely to do so. Alright. I'm not saying it won't, it's just less likely to do so. So, got our muffin tin. I'm just gonna put that guy in there. Just gently. Gently. And press. Probably. I'm paranoid. So. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And honestly, there's so much fat in there, it's probably going to be. Alright. Okay. There's one. I'm not going to do that after every single one. I'm going to kind of space it out some. So. Just kind of roll this a bit wider. Add a little bit more flour. There we go. And you notice how when I roll it, I kind of turn it a quarter turn, so it rolls out a little more evenly, but also doesn't stick to my surface. Kind of let, let that drop. And then form it like so. Mostly I'm trying to make sure this doesn't tear on me. go. There's four. Do I have more flour? Where'd my flour go? Flour, flour. Okay. <laughs> Admittedly, I think the bacon fat's a little stickier than regular shortening tends to be. I am not complaining though, because it's working. Okay. I'll just set that to the side for now. These two in there. Ah! Get back. Ah! It'll work. It'll work. It'll push right back together as soon as this guy gets in there. Um, that one seems a little thin. I'm gonna have to keep my eye on that one when it bakes. It'll be fine though. 
Alright, I'm just going to stick this in the fridge for now as I roll out the others. Help the crust chill some. And in the meantime, um... Yeah, I need to preheat my oven. So that needs to be preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. And as for this bit of dough, it's going right back in between the plastic to be rolled out once again. And just try to get it just as large as the last time. As you remember, we only got about six circles out of that. That should do it. There we go. All right. So, one, two, three. Four, five. I should be able to get six circle out of what's left of this. Ugh. It is starting to get kind of soft on me. That is the trouble with this. Okay, well, let's see what I can get. flower that side.
It's got a little sticky on me. It'll be fine. I will make this work, dang it! <laughs> Let's go ahead and transfer this guy, these guys, to the tray. And if it tears, it is okay to take a little bit of scrap dough and fill in the holes. Especially if it's towards the intersections. Because it's going to be baked over anyway. There we go. I think this guy needs to be re-rolled. Yeah. And I should be able to get three more circles out of this last bit of dough. That's the hope, anyway. Okay. Let's see how we do. go. Just gonna add some flour at the top. One, two, and three. scrap dough we're going to use to patch up any holes that we have. Which we don't really have many, but you know, sometimes it can't hurt to just be prepared about it. Okay. Careful in rolling these out just a wee bit larger. That should do it. There we go. It's a little bit of a thin spot towards the back there. I'm just gonna add some scrap dough. Patch that up in some spots around here that can definitely use a little bit of a patch or 
a little bit of a thicker bottom. There we go. Yeah. It's like I am so close to the end of this. So close. Come on. Work with me, Doe. Work with me. Okay. We're in. Nope, that needs to be combined with some scrap dough. this point I'm like screw it I'll smash it till it's large enough and then I'll just form it like play-doh into the cup there we go watch this be like the nicest looking ones just that's gonna be my luck you know Screw being careful. I'm done being careful. <laughs> this is why I don't do pastries all that often. There's always a point where the dough begins to get so soft. That you're like, just cooperate with me, damn it! Cooperate! This actually does kind of have the consistency of Play-Doh a little bit. Like I said, I've got some scrap dough, so I'm just going to use it to strengthen some of the thinner ones at the bottom. away that mess. Alright, so now that I've got that, and I also have my filling, we're gonna add some filling. About a tablespoon to each one. This is about a half tablespoon measuring spoon. So it should be two of these. And I am now realizing my fatal mistake. I forgot to add something to our filling. I know. I forgot to add a beaten egg, which explains why our filling is kind of pretty darn pasty. Not to worry, we will make this work. So. something missing. All 
Alright. So. It's one of those you just get caught up in what you're doing so much that you just kind of lose track of your own darn ingredient, of your own darn instructions. So. I am an ADD adult. Get used to it. So. Egg. Eh. I did not mean to put you through the matrix there. This guy. You can go over here for now. An egg. A fork. Oh, whiska, 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 whiska. Beat an egg. So that's pastry dough. All right. Thought it was lacking some moisture. And I think I could probably use a touch more oil, so... Here's the thing. Whenever you're cooking, your ingredients are going to vary up a little bit. So, if it's still a little, you want it a little thinner, I would say add a little melted butter, or in the case, since I have it, I've got some hazelnut oil. I'm just going to add drizzle in there. Just to thin that out a wee bit more. There we go. Beautiful. All right, now, <laughs> now this makes a heck of a lot more sense, I imagine. So, one, gonna need tablespoon in each. This is about a half tablespoon currently. Get my hair out of the way of the pie filling.
That should do it. And I'm going to get this into the oven. Set the timer for how long did I have this for? Uh, derp, 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 derp. 25 minutes or until set. I set it for 24, it'll be fine. Okay, so just gonna give my counter a clean. Because we've got another thing we need to do, and that is prep our first world fruit, i.e. dragon fruit. And these are actually deceptively easy to work with. You just cut it in half lengthwise, like so. I will say... That turned out rather beautiful, didn't it? And since that's going to stain the crap out of my cutting board, we're going to get another one out. Now, your dragon fruit's either going to be kind of unripe, so white on the inside, or ripe, this beautiful pink, ripe, red, color. It's also very juicy, as illustrated. But look, very much like a kiwi, you just scoop out the flesh, like so. I'm gonna pour the remaining juice into my... Mm. Guava mule. And all right, I'm just going to grab a bowl put that in once I finish cutting. So, I'm just going to cut these into half inch thick planks. Then I'm going to cube like so. Just because what we're going to do once these pies are cooled down that we're gonna make them into kind of a nut chocolate pie fruit tart by topping them with this dragon fruit and then glazing the dragon fruit with some strawberry jam. So. Now, depending on the size of your dragon fruit, you should be able to get all of these, 
like all a dozen for a single fruit. Uh, mine are kind of small though, so after we decorate the first few, we'll see if I need to cut up the second one or not. I'm just gonna get that a taste. Okay. It's not as tart as um, I'm used to with dragon fruit. It usually has kind of a kiwi flavor, but the right, uh, when it's ripened up, it's got a little bit more of an apple, uh, apple banana type flavor, which works, but I like a little bit more tartness. So with that, I've got some limes. I'm just gonna add a little bit of lime juice. Let's go with this guy. And just add a touch of that zest too. So, we'll just move this over here, that over there, grab my zester. And Ooh, that guy's dry. Man, I need fresher limes. Okay. Well, at least we got the zest out of that. Oh. All of you guys dry out on me? Let's see if this guy did. Okay, this one seems to be okay. Alright. I will say this looks pretty cool. There we go. So I'm just going to toss that in zest and lime juice. And it should balance the acidity some. No, as in adding it. Mm. Yep. Much better. Okay. So, since we got about 16 minutes left on our clock, I'm going to go ahead and make up our glaze just so we have it out of the way. And then, we will, as we're waiting for the pies to cool, uh, I've got my first dinner party coming up this weekend for you know, for 2021 since, you know, the, the plague. <laughs> uh, I'm super excited. I'm having some of my closest friends. Actually, I would say this group of friends is kind of responsible for me meeting my husband, meeting my husband when I did. So I'm super excited to have them over. I'm going to be making some sous vide pork chops with apple butter and mustard. Um, I still, I have all the chops cut, I just need to get them all in marinade. So we'll, uh, we'll do that while we wait for our pies to cool enough to add the fruit and glaze them. But in the meantime, 
while we're waiting for them to finish baking, I'm just gonna pop the camera over to my stove, which is right over here, and grab a small saucepan. And where's my strawberry jam? You're in here. You were in here. I had strawberry jam. Somewhere in here. Could have sworn that I had it. Maybe I can use lingonberry instead? My fridge is a mess. Uh... No, screw it. We'll use cherry. Because that's what I'm finding right now. Things are going so well. <laughs> hmm. Yep. Got some black cherry fruit spread. Right there. And we're gonna need about how much? Uh, we're gonna need about a quarter cup of that. Quarter cup. A measuring cup. A spoon. Got that. I've got my saucepan. Got that. And you're gonna need to add about an eighth of a cup of water, which is about half that measuring cup I just used. And I just need to put the heat on it. About medium to start with. and basically wait for that to melt. In the meantime, I'm gonna do a wee bit of cleanup. And by we, I mean we. I mean, I'm <laughs> not going too crazy. In fact, I'm probably not gonna even photograph these until tomorrow, because after this episode, I'm, I'm just gonna settle up and play some computer games or something. I am retired. Cheers to that. Mm. That was good. Huh. But hey, getting work done. Works for me. And I'm curious to see how those pies are doing, so I'm just going to take a quick peek at them. Oh good, they are definitely baking up nicely. That makes me happy. All right, so as you can see, it's starting to uh, boil on me a little bit. What I want to do is have all this jam here melt into our liquid here to create a nice syrupy glaze. That is one, gonna add a little bit of extra flavor and sweetness to our very, very ripe dragon fruit, but also it is going to act as a preservative to keep the fruit fresh looking. Until I'm actually ready to serve it, really. So I just I don't want any clumps. I want these clumps of jelly melted into a nice, smooth glaze. Which, as you can see, that is doing it for me. It's smoothing out. And 
and honestly, it's smelling rather lovely. I think, I wonder if there might be some lavender in this jelly. Oh, it smells excellent. You know, I might just change the recipe to have it be cherry preserves instead of strawberry. It'll go well with that chocolate and hazelnut. All right, as you can see, that is fully melted. So, just gonna set that to the side to cool down some, but just to keep it, for the most part, kind of warm. I'm just gonna stick a lid, not that lid. Where is it? That? Yes, that lid. I'm gonna stick that lid on there to keep that all nice and melted for when I paint my tarts. So, I'm just gonna move some stuff out of the way. I'm holding on to that cutting board just in case I need that extra dragon fruit, though. I don't think I am going to need it. We'll see what happens. In the meantime, I need to make up a marinade. So, I was hoping kind of figure out a general flavor profile. And we'll do that with tablespoons, or in this case, that's a tablespoon. Do I have a half tablespoon? It's like when I don't need a tablespoon, I have tablespoons. When I, uh, need a tablespoon, I don't. Such is the way of the world. We'll use that for the apple butter, and we'll use this half teaspoon for the mustard. And let's see, I've got this contain... Uh, naturally occurring sulfites are fine. What about the horseradish? Can we do horseradish now? And uh, what else can I add? I'll figure it out. I'll probably just add some kind of spices. Okay. So got some stone ground mustard. And uh, got some homey apple butter stuff. I don't have. Oh! Okay. So let's start out with one part apple butter and one part. Well, that smells okay. Stone ground must organic stone ground mustard. Give that a stir. For lack of a better way. Too sweet. So, I need... Hmm... Garlic powder will be pretty good. We'll do a bit of sumac. Extra bit of citrus in there. Ah, uh, I need more oil. That's not fresh. Um, maybe sesame oil could be pretty good. Yeah, let's give that a try. Sesame oil, apple butter, mustard, sumac, and garlic and pepper. So, add a. Now all those tablespoons are coming into play. And we'll 
do a it's quarter teaspoon for the sumac, quarter teaspoon for the garlic powder. Let's see how that is. Definitely needs more apple butter. Let's get that. Because the sesame oil is rather overpowering. And I think more garlic. And sumac. But it needs that acidity. So, I wonder if I can use apple cider, apple cider vinegar. Hmm. Mirin, maybe? I think they added sulfites. Let's say, yeah. Well, see how we do with a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar to thin that out some. That's good. Okay, cool. So, that is good to know. I'll just do that in each bag. So, let's get my pork chops out. Oh, which are all in the other fridge. Hey, Ben, can you grab the pork chops, please? So the nice thing about doing sous vide is if you're feeding about eight people, all you have to do is have a cooler and a sous vide unit. So we're going to be doing that once I get my pork chops, which are thankfully already in bags for me. Mm. How are we doing on those pies? Definitely use another minute. It's like... Okay. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and so I don't have to hold it open. There we go. All right. Kind of mix that all together so it coats the meat. And then try to get it as airtight as possible because I'm going to be sticking this directly into the pot with a sous vide unit. And that would be my pies. 
me just switch the stove cam. Grab my pot holders wherever the heck they went. Let's see how we're doing. I think it can be just a little bit more golden brown. We'll go in for another two minutes at most. Okay. So, back to what we were doing. Let's go back. There's two parts. Add the butter. Two parts garlic powder and sumac. One and two. A part mustard. A part apple cider vinegar. And a part sesame oil. Sounds like I need to take the pies out of the oven. See in the stove cam that those definitely need to cool some before we get to the next part, which we'll get to. But I'm gonna let get the couple more pork chops done, and then we'll try to remove them to get onto a wire rack to cool fully. So there we go. making marinade for, well, 16 people, essentially, to feed 16, so. teaspoon so that doesn't yeah so that doesn't contaminate anymore The thing is, as the sous vide machine is working, it'll cook the meat 
directly in the marinade. Which is gonna help import flavor and also add those juices while it's cooking. So once everything is done cooking, I'm going to sear the uh, pork chops and then glaze the pan with the pa uh, stuff from the bag. Maybe water it down some and then thicken it back up with some butter. It should be very tasty. Once again, trying to squeeze out as much air as possible. As far as a seal is concerned, as long as the top of your bag stays above the water while everything else is submerged, you should be okay. And make sure to use double zip freeze bags. Okay. Ooh, let's see. I'm just waiting for those pies to be cool enough to handle before taking them out.
two more to do on this batch, and then we'll remove those pies. Three more to do on this batch. Oh. So yeah, you ever have relatives that give you preserves and stuff for uh, the holidays? Uh, this was one of those cases. Giant, giant tub of apple butter from Virginia. Not that I'm complaining, mind you. But, you know, if you're just not really a regular jam and preserves eater, Use stuff in marinades. Trust me. Or pan sauces. You want to add a bit of a, uh, some fruity flavor to your pan seared salmon? Reduce some apricot or apricot jam or marmalade. Um, to your pan, a bit of water to deglaze it. Don't mind me, I'm just stacking stuff back up and the Tupperware for my dinner party. Oh boy, Let's see how cool are these guys? They're still pretty darn hot. I'll wait on those a little bit, just get these two pork chops and a marinade and then we'll take stuff out of the pan. I'm just making sure this is organic, or at least doesn't contain any sulfites other than, you know, naturally occurring ones.
right, one more. That is all of that batch, so I'm just going to grab a cooling rack. Go back to my stove cam and sincere, uh, sincerely hope this works. All right. Carefully. Ha <laughs> ha yes. Yay! It did work. Okay. Just gonna carefully lift these. About you, will you work for me? Come on. Ha ha. Yes. That will will be a sacrifice. This one might be too. Come on. Yes. Okay. Cool. Well, let's see how that crust turned out at least. Pretty darn flaky. I'm just gonna stick that over here. And those guys are for the most part cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move this to the dish I'm going to keep them in my fridge with. Hopefully they'll all fit. That is my sincerest hope. Well, maybe not sincerest, but my hope is still pretty darn sincere.
No. Stop falling apart on me. Well, this woman's gonna be a sacrifice anyway. So, we'll do that little guy on a separate plate. So, let's get a spoon here. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, this looks very pretty. Yeah, destroying my crust in the process. Gah. Okay. And finally, I'm gonna take that glaze that I made earlier and a pastry brush and we're just gonna delicately paint the top of each with that glaze and like I said this will not only add a little bit of cherry flavor to all of that which is excellent but it also helps preserve the fruit and keep it from getting all mushy on ya. Well, in this case, mushier than it already is, because this dragon fruit's a little ripe. Because this is the kind of thing that you actually serve later, after you've let it set in the refrigerator. So. Some on there. And since I've got a sacrifice ready to go, I'm just going to grab a plate and show you what it's going to look like when it's fully finished. I'm just going to paint that with some glaze. And thing is, you would refrigerate it then until you're ready to serve it. Uh, ideally about 30 minutes at least. But after that point, you then garnish it with a fresh mint leaf. Like so. And like I said, that's going to be my sacrifice because the crust kind of got destroyed on me. But, you know, I'm okay with that because I'm actually very curious to see how this turns out. It looks like I'm going to have to do so in spoonfuls <laughs> because it is still not quite cool, cool, uh, cool enough to handle. Mm. All right. 
Moment of truth. That is good. <laughs> I mean, the chopped mint that I mixed into the walnut and hazelnut earlier really comes out. Mm. Mm. That's excellent. So, that said, I would like to thank you for joining me today on The Gluttonous Geek Presents Munchies and Minis. Um, it was definitely a journey, but we got there, and not only that, right on the dot at about two till nine. So, hey, yay, we got w finally within our time limits. Yay. Um, and yeah, uh, next week I will not be streaming, uh, because it is one, the beginning of the month, and two, I will be sending out a poll this week to my munchies and, I'm sorry, my patreon subscribers to vote on the recipes that they want to see this month on munchies and minis so if you happen to be in my patreon and you're watching this video later or if you're currently on my patreon keep an eye out on your email over the next few days i will be sending out a poll uh, with this month's options for munchies and minis recipes uh, also keep an eye out on your email because i will be releasing all of this month's patreon recipe cards Lots of fun stuff. Um, if you happen to be on Munchies Minis uh, and you saw the past, haven't seen the past previous episodes, uh, I have made a potato soup inspired by the Red Sheaf Inn in Volo D Dungeons and Dragons Volo's Guide to the, to the Sword Coast. I made, well, this, the First World Mince Pie from Pathfinder Kingmaker. And I also made Lumi's Pumpkin Bread from Pathfinder's uh, Realm of the Fell Night Queen. Uh, story mo uh, campaign module. Uh, if you happen to be on my blog post or happen to have both um, Patreon, uh, you will once again be getting recipes before anyone else will be getting them. I have once again three this month. The first one, I have a coffee cake inspired by the book The Golem and the Genie. I uh, and actually it's kind of a modernized version of the Boston School of Cooking's coffee cake recipe from the 1890s turned out very well my boss has been devouring about half of it already uh, at my office uh, i also have a coconut chicken risotto like a whole chicken and risotto with dried apricots from the video game my time at porsche uh coming well it's already cooked and uh finally inspired by stranded deep i have a seared grouper with uh, Thai basil and a coconut mashed potato served with it. So uh, keep an eye out for that. It was delicious. I'm probably going to have the leftovers tomorrow evening while I am getting uh, everything ready and on Patreon before my D&D game. Right, so we are at 9 o'clock on the dot. Um, stay tuned for Munchies and Minis returning not this upcoming week but the following and if you happen to be on Patreon uh, keep an eye out for the poll for the next uh, vote of this upcoming month's Munchies and Minis episodes. My name is Catherine Barsanistas and you've been watching the Gluttonous Geek presents Munchies and Minis and as always stay safe, stay sane, stay you. Have a great night.